Number 74. If the pressure in the esophagus is negative 2 millimeters of mercury, while that in the stomach is positive 20 millimeters of mercury, to what height could a stomach fluid rise in the esophagus, assuming a density of 1.1 grams per milliliter? Um, so here's, the, uh, here's a little picture, right? The stomach is down here. Here's the esophagus. And the two are separated by the lower esophageal sphincter. If this is working properly, uh, no stomach contents come up into the esophagus. If it's not working properly, then we get contents coming up, and that's the sometimes common experience of heartburn. Now, um, what we need to do is we have a value of the density, so there's a certain fluid right in the stomach, right? certain acidic solution. And it tells us that the density of such uh, fluid, uh, so I'll just leave this as a little density here, is going to be equal to uh, 1.10 grams per milliliter. Now, we probably know we should be using kilogram per cubic meter. Just take this value, multiply it by 1,000 to make that conversion. All right, so this should be about uh, 1.10, not about, but it will be, 1.10 times 10 to the 3 now, kilogram per uh, cubic meter, okay? <clears throat> so what we need to do is we need to figure out if this sphincter uh, were to open or it's not working properly, whatever the case is, how high would this fluid rise in the esophagus, right? To what height will it rise? Now, if you look at the relative pressures here, all right, these I would assume are gauge pressures. So um, basically they both take atmospheric pressure uh, into account. But in terms of relative to one another, right, if we were to think about the net pressure uh, acting on this lower esophageal sphincter, I really should say the net force uh, acting on this lower esophageal sphincter, we come to realize that this negative pressure right, is essentially a pressure pulling into the center of the object, right? So if I were to kind of draw some arrows here, it's like into the center from all, all areas, right? It's a force pulling in from the center. Uh, excuse me, pulling in from the sides into the center. So that being the case, this, you know, this pressure down here has basically a, a force vector that's pointing upward. And this pressure in the stomach, right? It's uh, producing forces in all directions here against the stomach walls. It's also pushing up on that lower esophageal sphincter, right? So what do we realize with these two force vectors that they're pointing in the same direction, correct? And since they're pointing in the same direction here, we should have then kind of a net pressure overall pointing upward, okay? So what do you think that net pressure would be? Well, if it's 20, positive 20 millimeters of mercury in the stomach and then negative two millimeters of mercury in the, um, in the esophagus, remember this negative sign is just kind of giving us the direction. Since they're both pointing in the same direction, we would essentially add them together, right? Add them meaning add the absolute values, okay? I know this is negative, and if you add these two together, it's going to come out to be 18, but that's not uh, how the math should work out. Hopefully, the logic of the situation makes sense why we're going to add essentially the absolute values of them to one another. So we realize that there's a certain uh, pressure differential, right? Or a certain, uh, I'll call it the net pressure. Right? And that net pressure is equal to 22 millimeters of mercury. Right? 22 millimeters of mercury. Now, uh, we have to somehow relate this to the height of a certain object, uh, of, uh, the height of a certain liquid, right? Given its specific density here. Um, now, what we need to do is we need to now somehow take this and try to convert it into a value we can use in this equation. Now, what I could what I could do here is I could set up an inequality, basically. I could say that the net pressure right, that's acting on the sphincter will also be equal to the pressure that the uh, fluid, right, that the fluid is experiencing, because the fluid is in the stomach, right, and that, that fluid's gonna exp experience the same net pressure we're talking about. So what I can do is I can expand on each of these pressures now. I could say that uh, the you know net pressure uh, was a result of, remember that we're talking about millimeters of mercury. So we're talking about the height of the mercury, if it were mercury, right? Um, that we're talking, the density of then the mercury multiplied by gravity, that will equal then the height of the fluid multiplied by this uh, density of the fluid multiplied by gravity. Notice what happens with the gravity. They cancel, so that's pointless. 
and uh, we're after the height of the fluid, the height the fluid reaches. So just divide out then the density of the fluid. And we realize we have this, that the height of the mercury multiplied by the density of the mercury divided then by the density of the fluid will give us the height that the fluid reaches. This is the formula. All we got to do is now plug in the value simply. So this becomes, remember the height of mercury. You might be saying, well, where's the mercury in the problem? The mercury is given to us in the pressure, okay? So what's the height of mercury here? It's 22 millimeters. What's that in terms of meters? It's 0 0.022, right, meters. What's the density of mercury? Well, the density of mercury, it's going to be, th um, what was it? 13,000, right, if I remember correctly, 13,600 kilogram per cubic meter. We'll take that and then divide it by now the density of the fluid. Remember, we need the similar unit, so it's 1.1. 1.10 times 10 to the third kilogram per cubic meter. This is also the value density of mercury in kilogram per cubic meter. And guess what? When we calculate this, we're going to find the, the uh, height of the fluid. Okay? So let's do it. Height of the fluid. 0.22, excuse me, 0 0.022 times 13,000. 600 divided them by 1.1 times 10 to the third. And here we have a value then that the height that this fluid will reach in the esophagus will be equal to 0.272, and that will be in terms of meters. Okay, so if you want to convert that into centimeters, right, divide it by, excuse me, multiply it by 100 or whatever you want to do. Um, any case, I gotta run. I don't know if you hear my dog, but he's destroying the window. So I hope this helped and take care and remember to subscribe. Bye.